suppose I travel and I see many beautiful parts of the world, beautiful people, beautiful places, nature in amazing bounty, whether it's you know the jungles of Ecuador and Costa Rica or the beaches of Sri Lanka. You know, a lot of those are in danger. They're under threat. Uh, it could very well be that one or two generations from now, they don't get to see those. And that makes me quite sad. We're better than this. We're smarter than this. You know, we've created the problem. We can solve the problem. We just have to be more conscious about how we live, about our impacts. And I think we are getting smarter. It's one of the things that with our connected world today, with our high-tech world, we're getting much, much better at. What's emerging is a collective consciousness. The idea of a living planet is coming alive. You know, it's really a choice about whether we want to coexist with the planet, or whether we want to live in harmony with the planet, or whether we're somehow like a parasite on the planet. And we know what happens to parasites. If their host dies, they die too. The only way that this works is if sustainability, circular thinking, closing the loop is applicable to everyone. This is not some luxury for the rich and wealthy and privileged. It has to be a solution for people who are on lower incomes, perhaps people who are in developing countries. This must be an option where they can make choices about how they consume, how they produce, that bring them a direct benefit. And it's not impossible because a lot of that circular thinking goes back to a time when resources were scarce. Whether it be during the World Wars or the Great Depression, that's when we were forced to think about frugality. To say, well, how do we reuse things? How do we recycle things? So no matter where you are in society, no matter who you are, you can make those choices, you can educate your children not to just throw things away, not to just leave the lights on, to think about whether you really need something, to think about where it goes when you throw it away. These are all things that we can all do. It's not the privilege of the few, but rather the responsibility of us all. To see a world emerging all around us in which landfills grow taller than skyscrapers, and in which rivers run dry, in which forests are burning. You know, these things make me sad. And I don't want to be melodramatic, but if you look at the numbers, if you look at the trends, it's not good news. What I want us to focus on is what's possible because I've seen that change can happen really fast and that that dystopian world, that world of our nightmares, is not inevitable. We need to think about this revolution that we're going through as a way in which we can make our mark on this earth, a positive footprint. It's up to us to be part of the solution. And actually we're all looking for meaning in life. Well, what could be more meaningful than making life flourish rather than destroying life? We can buy into this mission. We can make it our personal mission to be part of the solution. At the end of the day, what do you want to tell your grandchildren? Were you part of the problem or were you part of the solution? Do you want to be part of the decline of civilization? Or do you want to be on the side of hope, of reinvention, of recreation, of the kind of life and the kind of earth that we were really meant to enjoy? The choice is always is yours.